tell me what does Tupac Amaru Shakur mean? Okay, it means it, I was named after this Inca chief from South America whose name was Tupac Amaru, but it's a lot of people named Tupac Amaru. It's like a whole tribe named Tupac Amaru. So my mom named me after this Inca chief, and I think the tribal breakdown means like intelligent warrior, something like that. But. I see. He's a deep dude. <laughs> he, is, he is. If I go to South America, they're going to love me, I'm telling you. It's like you don't even want to see me. They call this place Weirdo Beach. I don't know. It ain't that weird to me. <laughs> when you first moved to Oakland, that, that was your first stop in California? Right. And no, no. Marin City was before Marin Oakland. City? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then Oakland. Well, you, you left Baltimore and came to Marin City. Yes. And when you were in Baltimore, you were in a, high, a school of the performing arts. Yes. How come you didn't enroll in one when you came to California? I, I couldn't find one. When I came to California, I was broke, so I had to um, go to a regular high school. But you eventually dropped out, right? Yeah, sure did. I didn't have enough credits. Like, everybody was about to graduate. I had came, went into the 12th grade, was about to graduate, everything. Right before I was about to graduate, they was like, you got to come back next year and get a health credit and a, P, a physical education credit. And I was like, oh, hell no. I had just barely made it out with money coming to school and lunch money and all that. I said, I got to get paid. I got to find a way to make a living. So I dropped out knowing that I would have graduated. It wasn't no big thing. Not to say that y'all shouldn't graduate, but for me at that particular time, it was more important that I found somewhere to live. But you did get your GED. You moved out on your own. Mm -hmm. And what, so what did you get as far as a job is concerned? What did you do when you stopped going to school? I only had two jobs ever in my life. One was in Round Table Pizza. I used to make the pizza, but it was good. It was the perfect job, Tabitha, because I was hungry and I got to like eat all the toppings off people's pizza. That's why, I, <laughs> hey, because everything is right there. Could you imagine I was making pizzas on the side, <laughs> <laughs> bringing pizzas home. I'm calling in my own deliveries, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let me get uh, two shrimp with everything. <laughs> um, but that job, I lasted about a month. Then I worked as the guy that packs your bags in the supermarket for about, uh, let's see, two weeks. Then the dude kept catching me writing raps by the time clock. I used to be like, you know, I'm gonna write for Instead a while. Instead of loading people's hours. groceries. <laughs> Nice. She can carry her own shit. So. Did it ever Bye -bye. occur to you that you might be able to get scholarships to go to college, or was that just not even an issue? I always wanted to go to college, but I wanted to go to college and be comfortable. Like how people, like, I don't know, this might be presumptuous, but like I know a lot of people that are in college, they, they, they have their lives already okay, you know what I mean? Like someone's paying for them to go to college. They have somewhere to live. They have somewhere to live while they're going to college. You know, they get money, all that. Somebody can pay their tuition and all of that. I don't. I don't have that. And until I can have that, I can't go to college, even though I want to, because that type of that turned me on. With all the encouragement that you got in Baltimore at the High School of Performing Arts for your acting, did mm -hmm. it ever occur to you to come out to California and be a professional actor here when your mom moved out here? Nah, that was the last thing on my mind. I came to California. I was broke, nowhere to stay. Um, what do you mean nowhere to stay? I didn't have anywhere to stay. I was staying with a friend of a friend of a friend of my mother. Why weren't you staying with your mother? Because she was in. At, no, she was in Baltimore. We didn't have any lights and electricity. We was about to get evicted, so I had, she sent me first. So, you know how mothers do mm -hmm. protect the young. So I went out there broke. I wasn't even thinking about acting. I was just thinking about surviving. But such is life. I ended up doing it. What I, what I love the most. I ended up doing both of those things. During that time when you went to California, your mother was in Baltimore. Is that when she was a crack addict? No, she was uh, um, addicted to crack when I was in California. First we were in California. What's up? All right, what's happening? <clears throat> and what was that like to have a mother who was addicted to crack? I love my mom. She the bond to me, so I, know I love she all is the now, mistakes. But what about then? It was hard. It was hard because, you know, she was my hero. Did she you ever have any temptation with crack? Never, ever. My, never, never. My father died like that. But well, the man that I know, I knew was my father. The man that I knew died. The man that I knew was my father. He died with cocaine. So it was never my thing. And why do you think that your mother had that time of weakness with crack? Everything was just going bad for her. It's harder for a woman to raise a family than it is for a man. Oh yes, all day.
What you think? A little bit of meat? Tip it to the side, a little something, something? It ain't my style, they're not Gutierrez. Give me a characterization of your childhood. How would you describe what it was like growing up? I was the total opposite of what I am right now. I was quiet, withdrawn, I read a lot, I wrote poetry, I kept a diary, um, I watched TV all the time, I stayed in front of a television, I went to movies, everything. What did you do that was I mean, it seems like going from a homeless shelter to a project or having to worry about having enough food on the table must have been very difficult. How did you deal with that? Were there any therapeutic ways for you to heal yourself? I smoked weed. I hung out with the drug dealers and the criminals and I got... Uh, and that made you feel better? Interestingly well, enough, yes, because they're pro they have those same problems and they found a way to get out of it. As a kid, this is what I was thinking. And so did you end up selling drugs also because those were your I, I think I tried, selling, I tried selling drugs for maybe uh, two weeks. Then the dude was like, oh man, give me my drugs back. Because I, I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> I sell, somebody didn't pay me back. I'd be like, oh, it's okay. Smoke you know what most I mean? of it. Yeah, no, I never smoked it, never smoked it. I'd just be like, it's okay, you don't have to pay me back. Um, dudes would give me their watch and say, you know, Give me this amount for my watch. Like in a pawn shop all Yeah, the time. and I give him his watch back, and he didn't give me no money. So, dude's like, no more for you. So then the dope dealers used to just look out for me when I would come back from school. They'd just give me money and be like, don't get involved with this. Get out there, do your dream. So they was like my sponsors. You need to get him on film. Well, uh, that boy say Tupac watches. Tupac watches, I got him, right? You need to get him on film. You got Tupac watches, man. Yeah, I'm fucking with him. You know what I'm saying? Right about how he talking about Tupac watches. No, he, he getting his own. You got that with the Alex Rock. No, man, I don't want to have that motherfucker. Oh, yeah, that's You got the real one on the hook. Yeah, no doubt, bro. I might get that shit. Man, that shit on. Do you like watches? Go ahead, man. How Ben is doing? Yeah, you got to go take some shit. You know, you the man. No, I'm not saying. I don't want to keep the time. You need to sell something. I don't want to mess up your thing out here. Yeah. All right, man. Tupac, right, man. You stay up, man. Everyone say Tupac. Right here. Tupac autograph. $20, right? I got you. You're supposed to put I love you. I'm all right. I love you. I love you. I love you. How did you go from making pizza to being in Digital Underground? I used to rap everywhere. I was one of those people, man. I put my tape in the tape deck. I interrupt talks, conversations, and just start rapping. So. I met up one person, one person hooked me up with another person, this lady named Layla. Um, introduced me to Adrian Gregory, who was managing Digital <laughs> Underground. He was like, I'm gonna send you to Digital Underground there in the studio. You just rap for Shock G on the spot. If you like you, then I'll pick you up. And so, what was your first interaction with Shock G? Was he totally impressed? Yeah, I just walked in rap for him. He's like, okay, good, you're in. Boom, 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 I'll see you later. And I just left, walked out of there like, dag. Was he wearing that big nose thing nah, for it? No, he's, he's just chilling. He's just normal. Do you look back on those days with fondness or a little embarrassment? I look back with the greatest fondness. The, the, those were like some of the best times of my life because... Well, when I mentioned Digital Underground to you yesterday, you were like, duh! No, because <laughs> it just brings back like silly. Yeah, I guess it's I mean, embarrassing too, but it's all funny to me. It's all good. The, the silly parts is like me running around and zebra print underwears and uh, making simulated sex with blew up dolls and just, we had like the funniest, craziest show. I think hip hop need another digital underground right now. Do you ever talk to any of them anymore? No doubt, Shock G. He was involved with me against the world. He came to see me in jail. He did? Yeah, no doubt. How long do you think it's going to take? 10 minutes. Okay. Just in black? Yeah. Okay. $40 minimum charge. At what point in your early life were you introduced to this quote unquote thug mentality? When I was out there by myself with nowhere to stay and no money. Which, which city? And, um, in California? Bits of it was in Baltimore. Pieces of it was in uh, 
Marin City, and then the rest came in Oakland. And what was your in first LA. introduction? Drug dealers or? Drug dealers, uh, pimps, prostitutes. Um, that's really it. Criminals. But they weren't like young, glamorous guys, you know? They weren't like, well, they didn't Well, why did you want to hang out like with that. them then? They just, they the only people that cared about me at that point. When I had nowhere to go, and I was But you said your hungry. mother always cared about you. She did, but she was lost at that particular moment. And she couldn't, she wasn't caring about herself at that moment. Tell Being me. a man, I needed a father, uh, I needed a male influence in my life. And these were the males. The other males who could have been a more positive influence on me were too scared to come where I was or they didn't have the money, or they didn't right. have the heart, or whatever. Well, tell me about not growing up with a father. Why didn't you grow up with a father? It's not just me, it's a lot of people, but I In didn't because, case. I mean, the times that I came up in was like the late 60s, they were still having free love, you know, they was just hitting what they was hitting. And my mother got pregnant and didn't really wasn't really getting with the guy that She was got married her to someone else at the nah, time. No, no, she right? wasn't married. No? My mother was out just living her life. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, she got pregnant and had me. I didn't have a father. Did then you know father, who the father was, your biological father? I still don't know who it is, um, for sure. I've never taken any blood tests. The guy who I knew was my father, who claimed to be my father, he, he passed away, he died. And is that legs? Yes, but then recently, while I was, when I, after I got shot, this other guy came, was like, he was my father, and he looks like me. He been in the jail to see me. His kids look like me. Well, what was that like? That was the bug out. I just woke up and he was standing over me, so. In jail? When I was in the um, hospital. And what did he, I mean, do you believe him? I do in a way because he looks like me and his kids look well, like me. Why don't you get a blood test to find out? It's, it's scary. Is it pointless now? In a way. I mean, I'm not going to love him any more or love him any less. So it's pointless. Did he explain why he left? Yeah. What did he say? It was personal. It wasn't, you know, I don't want to bring, okay. put his word. I'll, I'll tell everything about me, but right. I don't want to no, give out his business. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> Can you tell me why you looked at Legs as your father? Because the way my mom's told me was like, he didn't even care. He was like, yo, because he slept with her around the same time. So he was like, you had a kid? She was like, yeah. He came and saw me in the bed. I had a real big head when I was a little kid. Same thing like right now. And he's like, oh, that's my son. No blood tests, nothing. He was just like, that's my son. Took care of him, he gave me money. But he was like a criminal too. He was a drug dealer out there doing his thing. And so he only came, bought me money material things. You said that you had to go through a lot of tough times on the streets and you had to suffer a lot of abuse as a child. What yeah. kind of specific abuse are you talking about? I'm going to write a book and tell, and tell everything. So you're not going to tell me? Then I, I mean, are no, we talking... Then I wouldn't get no money for my pain. I'd rather write a book about it. <laughs> get paid for my pain. You don't pain. count all those number one albums as money for your pain? Yeah, but I want to write about it. It'll be deeper. All right. All right. Um, your mother has said that Tupac is always, your mother said Tupac has always been the person who makes up the game. Yeah. Do you know what she meant by that? I don't know what she meant, but. How do you interpret it? That, <laughs> I put it down. <laughs> you what? I put it down. I put it down. If it's about rap music, if it's about acting, whatever, I, I try to get, I want to get into the head seat, to the front seat. So I do what I got to do to get to the front seat. Um, I work hard. Um, I gotta be involved. I gotta, I gotta excel at it. It can't be a small thing. It gotta be a big thing. And I'm, I believe that I'm a natural born leader. I, I don't, I don't really take orders. I can take orders because I'm a good soldier. But I like to give orders. I like to say, you know, I like to follow my own heart. But I don't like to control other people. Right. I think everybody should be the leader. Mhm. Mm well, that's why it confuses me. It seems like those characteristics are the characteristics are the characteristics of somebody who would want to find out who shot them. I don't understand why you can take five bullets and not be doing everything in your power to find out who did it. Because I'm saying, like, and then what do, do I do? Do you not believe that there's justice? Do you not and believe that there's a shot? Find and then what do I do when I find them? Press hmm? charges. Attempted but the police murder. Know, the police know who shot me. 
And you don't believe that they're doing all they can to do that? Def, they're not doing everything they can to do that. They know who shot me. I already know who shot me. Number one, number two. But if it, it's like everybody knows who shot me, the police know who shot me. I well, don't they have no know problems. who shot you. How come you don't know who shot you? Because they won't tell you. No, nah, it's, it's just I don't know. That situation with me is like what comes around goes around. Karma. I believe in karma. I believe in all of that. I, I'm not worried about it. You know, they miss. I'm not worried about it unless they come back. All right. That's one of them. Oh, let me put it in the bag for you. Yeah. All right. And by the way, no tax for you. Oh, that's okay. You know that's what? Smart. You my homeboy. Come in. Come in. What's up? Sam, All right. How you? Man, make me rich, man. man, I got so many incense, uh, I'm starting uh, to stink. Right. What's up? All right. You grew up without a father. How do you feel like your life would be different if you had grown up with a father? I'd have had some discipline. I'd have had uh, more confidence. Uh, you seem pretty confident to me. Now I am. Because now I'm, I'm, I believe that I'm, a, I'm my own man. And I'm a man, you know, money gave, gave me confidence. The screams of the crowd gave me confidence. But before that, I was a shell of a man. Do you feel like one day that you'll be a good father? I think I'll be a very, very good father. Why? Because I love kids. I love, uh, I love the innocence. That really, I, it just does something to my chest. The innocence that they have and how they look up to you and how you can't do no wrong to them. And uh, I love that, man. I would do anything. I'd do damn near anything. I'd do damn near anything for them. All the kids in my life, my nieces, nephews, all, they get anything they want. They got the best Christmases, everything. They get whatever they want. I'm a sucker for them. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't have any kids myself because I'm scared to bring any children into this world, especially any black children. For now? For right or forever? now. Just for right now. Tell me about being raised by a mother who is a black panther. It was great to me because she taught me how to be more international instead of being local. And I did get some principles from her that I, that I always be with me. She taught me how to be community orientated. And um, she, I think my mother taught me to understand women a lot more than my, my peers can. You're in touch with your feminine side? I think so. <laughs> I think so. How Actually. do you know? Because I can be around, I'm not uncomfortable around women. I'm not uncomfortable around strong women. I'm not, um, I don't feel more, uh, I don't get like a, a, a predator thing going when I'm around demure females, you know? I don't get a thing like this when I'm around strong females. I like being around females, I'm comfortable. I can get with them on every level. To where I got homies that just get straight nervous around females. Weren't you going to maybe start a community center with Mike Tyson? I am. What's the, is that progressing? Well, what I'm trying to do now is I have this program where I'm going to have like a, um, a, a rap league for like me, Tupac, I have his own football team, and Coolio I have a football team, and Tretch have a football team. We all Made sponsor up the team. Made of kids and neighborhoods? Right. We sponsor the teams, have big um, games, probably get MTV to come do the World Series. Um, get like all the community people, like the churches to come out there and sell food and get the fathers and the uncles to be security and get the FOI and the deacons and everything and bring the community spirit back. And then on the weekends, we have like block parties. So I'm doing all this to raise money. Then we have like get a date, um, fundraisers, like people try to get a date with Tupac or Tretch or one of the other rappers. And where would the money go to? We'll, ha we'll have like a neutral center where we'll, we'll, we'll get the money together and that'll be for, we're trying to get a community center in every ghetto in the United States. It seems to me that you are trying to distance yourself from a thug life mentality. Is Not that? that, I'm just trying to show who I am. That people locked up on one part of me that they really did not understand. So now I'm trying to do two things. One, help them understand the part of me that they didn't understand. And two, is to show that, um, you know, this is the type of things that young black males can do. We can do anything. If you just give us a shot, stop trying to beat us down. Tupac, your life has been marred by considerable pain. Do you think you'll ever get to the point where you can live a normal, happy life? No. But I, uh, I'm going for it. I'm trying for it. And until then, I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best 
with what I have. Do the, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody, I don't think.